call the meeting to order. Mike, can you please call roll? Ms. Panetti. Present. Dr. Brown. Here. Mr. Essenplan. Here. Ms. Hogue. Ms. Hollingworth. Here. Ms. Paoli. Vice President Hogurdle. Here. President Crooked. Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mike, can you please read the statement concerning open public meetings? Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the superintendent of schools in the following manner. On January 10th, 2023, notice of this meeting was posted on the district website. A written notice was submitted and filed to the Haddonfield Borough Clerk, and notices were emailed to the Courier Post and Retrospect newspaper. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. We have a lot of great things today on our agenda. We are going to start with the oath of office for newly elected um, board member Mike Knuckles and Mr. Catalano will be administering that. States. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and to the governments established in the United States and this state and this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people so help me God so help me God I I might not hold do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. That I prescribe that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of a board of education. For the office of member of a board of education. And that I am not disqualified as a voter. And that I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to pursuant to RS 19 colon 4 1. RS 19 colon 4 1 nor disqualified due to the conviction of a crime or offense, nor disqualified due to the conviction of a crime or offense listed in, listed in NJS 18A colon 12 dash one. <laughs> NJS 18A colon 12 dash one. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of that office, perform all the duties of that office, According to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Yeah, and we do know that is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> I did not write that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not That's impressive. Okay, so um, we are going to move on to our Teacher of the Year rec recognition. All right. All right, good evening, uh, everyone. I'm Dr. Priolo. I'm the Assistant Superintendent uh, in the district. And uh, I really had the honor this, uh, this past year of coordinating the Governor's Educator of the Year uh, Recognition Program, uh, which recognizes the best teachers across the state of New Jersey. Now, uh, the way the program works is each school district can voluntarily, partic voluntarily participate in this program uh, to nominate uh, a, a teacher of the year in every school building and an educational support professional in each building. Everyone knows what a classroom teacher is. An educational support professional could be a nurse, 
a child study team member, a related service team member, or paraprofessional, um, and other uh, non -certificate, uh, certificated and non certificated uh, staff members. And um, you know, it's without a doubt that the thing that makes the school district so special, aside from our students, are our teachers. Uh, I, I've had the pleasure of working in the school district now for 18 years, and I'm always uh, in awe of the dedication, the passion, and the commitment that the teachers in Hannafield bring to our classrooms and to the lives of our students each and every day. And through this, we get to honor the very best uh, of this group. Uh, and I'm so proud to have some of them with us here tonight. To give you a little more background, there are five things that our teachers are judged on in order to receive this award. One is uh, they serve as an exceptionally skilled and de dedicated educator. They inspire students of all backgrounds and abilities to learn. They demonstrate leadership and innovation in and outside the classroom has the respect and admiration of students, parents, administrators, and colleagues, and they play an active role in the community as well as the school. Now this year we had over 200 nominations, uh, which I, I think is remarkable, but I think even more remarkable than that, nearly 50% of those nominations were from our students. So I think that really says a lot and should even shine a brighter light of the, the wonderful and amazing educators that we'll be uh, celebrating tonight. So I'm going to read the list of winners, and then our principals are going to come up starting with the high school and tell a little more about uh, the, the, tonight's recipients. So the 2002-2023 award winners for the Haddonfield School District from Central School, Leanne Gaffney, Central School Grade 3, and Barbara O'Shaughnessy, Central School Educational Assistant. From Haddon School, Miranda Yanayek, Grade 3. Tatum School, Mary Hall, teacher grade five, and Sophie Nelson, media specialist at Tatum and Elizabeth Haddon. From Haddonfield Middle School, Deneen Scott, special education teacher, and Michelle Barringer, nurse. And from our high school, Steve Fluharty, counselor, and Ron Smith, science teacher. So we are really, again, thrilled to have everyone here. It's great to see family members and little family members here <laughs> joining us and celebrating this uh, really wonderful event. So I'm going to ask Ms. Mikhail to come up first um, and talk about her team faculty. I'm so glad that you went over the five categories to vote because it just reminds me so much of how perfect Ron Smith is for this award. So I'm going to start with Ron. Um, <clears throat> For me, I, I have some quotes and went something else. They wanted to come up and talk about Mr. Smith, and they didn't have him. <laughs> and it's based on just what their friends go on and on and on and on. Now they wish they weren't seniors so that they could take the class. So they might be back next year. <laughs> for, for me, personally, watching, when you look at the definition of a great teacher, it's, it's seriously Mr. Smith. His passion for the subject is top notch. But then the passion he instills in his students is amazing. So he does inspire students who want to go out and, and major in environmental science and continue with the field. But those who don't, it still impacts their life now. And to me, this is one of the most important topics to learn about, our environment. And he does it in a way that is just growing. And he's, and he's taking had a film memorial high school and then he's expanding it beyond our little world to bigger projects to getting the kids to present at conferences to research it's so related so when you talk about all those five pillars uh to that we looked at every one of them the leadership the inspiration that he gives the students um the passion sometimes now my daughter happens to have mr smith and i have to change my lifestyle because of what she's learning in that class um, <laughs> And it's all wonderful things. So just to see that natural talent and how it impacts our students is really what education is all about. And we are so, I know every day how fortunate we are to have many teachers here, especially uh, Mr. Smith. So um, congratulations, it's very well deserved, I don't know. I mean, yeah, some of our friends have taken environmental science and I know one of my friends who's been majoring that in college and also just brings that energy of passion about the environment to like practice every day, like picking up trash while we're going on a run, just to try to 
healthy environment. So while I've never had Mr. Cook as my teacher, I've definitely heard nothing but love and love. So, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> You have to come up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You have to sit in the back. Yeah. 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 So, as a photo is being taken, I also wanted to add that um, once the nominations come in, there's a panel in each school building. The panel is made up of a community member board member, administrator, a teacher, and uh, an HEA representative. Uh, so that each building goes through a review process. They spend a lot of time deliberating, looking at all the nominations. Um, and then after that, there's a whole group meeting where they talk about each of the candidates. Uh, and, and that's how, uh, that's how the, uh, the, the votes get tallied. And for our teacher winners, they have the opportunity to apply to be the county teacher of the year. And then those who get selected to be the county teacher of the year then have the opportunity to uh, 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 put in for the state teacher of the year. And uh, he should win. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anybody else out there. <laughs> <laughs> my teacher should go ahead and uh, submit for the county level because we think they all have a, an outstanding shot. Um, uh, yes, I know. I'm just speaking for high school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Part two of me having a really easy night tonight is Mr. Flew Hardy uh, winning our educational specialist, is that how you call it, um, of the year. Uh, I've worked with Steve as a counselor when I started as a dean of students. We worked really closely and again, the passion and love and care that he gives his teach uh, students and the teachers, his students, the, the amount of individualized support and attention that the students get here at the high school from our counseling department is top notch. I've never seen anything like it anywhere else. Uh, the amount of time that they spend to really develop what their, not just their schedule and their future is gonna look like, but dealing with them and what their daily stresses are. Um, you know, it's not a random night that I can get a text at nine o'clock because Steve thought of something for one of his students or has an idea for the department as a whole. So he's always trying to look at ways to make our school better, our students better, our staff better, me better. Uh, so I really appreciate the love and care that you give our students, especially in this day and age where um, it's not easy being a teenager. It's way harder than it was for us. And um, you do it so gracefully and so passionately that we're very lucky again to have your leadership and your compassion at the high school. And they did have Mr. Blue Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have the privilege of having Mr. Party from my freshman year until my senior year, so all four years. Um, just super diligent, dedicated to every student. I just felt so supported by like your presence in the school throughout the four years. So thank you so much. Scott, you think of admiration, you think of respect. She won the award. 
teachers were coming out of their classrooms, it was like they won the award. And I think that type of affection, personality, type of affection that they have for her is something that translates throughout our school. Um, and so when her name was mentioned, uh, you just see people's face like that. You, I think you mean so much to so many. Um, and the way you carry yourself is, is something that is, is kept for me as kind of a young administrator, but at the same time, as the other part of school. Uh, so, Neen Scott, come on up. adventures um, and, and then when I came to the middle school kind of her same infectious personality uh, but what, what was great about Michelle is that uh, students just gravitate to her um, and so from a, a person who's in the role of caring and caring for the needs of students it's good that students know they can go to her and get that care she she, she couldn't be here today uh, but she's one of the you know the best nurses we've been around so we're happy that she got the support as well School, uh, Mr. Jerry Messenger. All right, so we'll start with uh, Ms. Stacey Antioch. I'll, I'll be brief since the uh, uh, CRD is faster. Uh, I think uh, what sets all of these educators apart is how they make students speak. Um, and Miranda makes eight year olds every day feel like the most important people in the world. Um, and I think that that is something uh, that really sets her, sets her apart. She started uh, out at Haddon as a student teacher. Uh, her and the educator I'm going to talk about next, Sophie, shared a commonality that they were both the computer lab educational assistant at Haddon. Um, and uh, she's been, for the past eight years, uh, I've watched her grow from you know, getting out of college uh, to being just an amazing uh, educator. And the things uh, that she does in the classroom is such a warm and inviting place and a place that you want to be um, and spend time. And her reach also goes far beyond the classroom. As we all know, the last couple of years have been uh, extremely challenging and Miranda has faced it with positivity every step of the way. Uh, she leads a weekly meditation uh, for our faculty uh, every Tuesday if you want to stop by. Um, and she has uh, led several clubs and different volunteer opportunities, including leading our student council this year. Uh, she's really stepped into a major leadership role on her team. She's mentoring uh, two teachers right now simultaneously, uh, which is no uh, easy feat. So we're so lucky uh, to have you on with Matt Miranda. I was going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When we came uh, to, to deliver the award to Miranda's classroom, you know, it, it, it was like the uh, the movie moment. I mean, she stopped. She, was, she, she couldn't believe what was happening. And I think the words out of her mouth are, this, this is one of the greatest things that's ever happened. Uh, of course, aside from her daughter being born in <laughs> But congratulations, Miranda. We are so happy for you. And Tatum, Miss Sophie Nelson, and I'm surprised uh, that Sophie didn't come in one of her many costumes. Uh, <laughs> she often wears uh, when you enter the library. My favorite being Detective Nelson um, when she kicks off the mystery unit. Uh, and by the way, the pandemic did not stop her from doing this. She did a fantastic job during the pandemic. She was dressed in her various costumes and she was making videos um, from her students uh, at home. And she, um, her reach certainly also, like Miranda, goes uh, well beyond uh, just the library. Uh, she's plans our Read Across America Week every week, which is a district-wide initiative. She's currently uh, one of the advisors of our student voice uh, group, and she teaches a little bit of everything uh, in the library, from diverse books 
to coding, to maker space, to website building. I could go on and on. Uh, I watched her do a lesson yesterday, and at the very end, uh, with about four minutes to go, she introduced an activity on gratitude. And I thought to myself, there's no way the kids are going to finish this in four minutes. And they all did it and did a fantastic job. Uh, they made these mugs about three things that they were thankful for. So she really, um, like Miranda, just makes the kids uh, feel so important. And the library is a lively place where it's um, about reading books, but also just about um, so much more. So uh, we're very lucky to also have Sophie uh, as a member of our faculty. Uh, unfortunately, our, our winners of Central School, Leanne Gaffney, Barbara O'Shaughnessy, Senator Regrets, they can't be here this evening. Both exceptional uh, uh, educators, uh, and, and we just, again, send their, uh, our, our, our thanks and appreciation for the work they do. Uh, finally, I'd like to bring up a team school principal, Ms. Donetta. Phrase in the district is growing in excellence, and we look at educators up here, they exemplify excellence, and they are why we are such an outstanding school district. So, on behalf of the entire school district, the Board of Education, the entire administrative and faculty and staff, thank you all very much for all of you do. Thank you.
thank you all again. Um, we, without our, our teachers and all of our support staff, our librarians, all of us, it really, and, and, and we know as parents, this is what makes the, the system work. And um, it's really hard to put into words what uh, impact that um, all of these people in our building represent to our students and have on our own children. So, um, so we thank you for your dedication and for all those who came out in support of them. Okay, moving on to board committee reports, the curriculum committee. Um, I do not have anything for us today. Our meeting will be on Wednesday, January 18th. Finance, Greg, have you had a meeting yet? We have not had a meeting yet. Uh, next week. Policy, Lynn's not here today. Rachel? Yeah. Uh, we met on Tuesday morning, and I forgot to log in. Well, so you got to just give me one. Nobody go on to our meeting. Perfect. I was unable to yeah. be there. Oh, for personal reasons, so Mike will take that. Yes, today. So, so we had a. Uh, we met. I thought you were going to say me, and I'm like. <laughs> 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 so Jake uh, will be uh, 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 <laughs> Try to circle back. Again. <laughs> uh, we met on Tuesday the third. Uh, we had a brief meeting, and we met many times leading up to to the holidays. But um, you, know, you gave a long uh, update, and we met on the December eighth. But uh, we uh, discussed where we're at currently in the the um the, the process and the selecting scope for the referendum. Uh, and we also discussed uh, some upcoming coming, uh, presentations that we'll have in the next few months for um, pertaining to the LRFP. Um, and also we talked about some challenges uh, we may face, uh, particularly uh, with uh, the possible acquisition of Kingsway. Um, and then we also discussed that we've got a lot of meetings ahead of us coming. When you said presentations, Mike, those are the presentations for the public and the community, or different presentations? Both. Okay. For, for the one, so for next week, we're going to look at we're going to, we have our priority of, of, of needs. Okay. So we'll go that over that, and then beginning of February, we start looking at the scope of work. There'll be presentations here, but they'll also be followed by like coffee houses and stuff, yeah. stuff like that, okay. and sort of thing. So there'll be a lot of meetings. <laughs> and so looking yeah. forward what was that to that. Was, that was eight o'clock the day after the break. Oh, that went, yeah. Who yeah. <laughs> yeah. would have ever scheduled that? Was it January 2nd? <laughs> <laughs> very optimistic about that. Not the best planning. Okay. Um, Mike, do you have a student yeah. life? Sure. Um, I'll just briefly share that we're really uh, excited to let this group know that we're in the process of establishing a new committee, the Student Life Committee within the district. I'm going to be chairing the SLC. Uh, the committee has been selected and we're going to have our first meeting on Thursday next week where we will essentially define the goals, the scope, um, performance measures and more, and we will be uh, equipped to share more kind of high level on the structure and scope and more in our board meeting next week. So stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, Rachel? Yeah, so policy? for policy, we met on Tuesday morning. Um, the first readings that you'll see on the um, list are extensive, but many of them are pretty straightforward, mandatory kinds of policy updates. Um, so dressing grooming is one we've talked about before. I think it's important to note that the public gave us some feedback. We had looked at some various rounds and talked to a lot of stakeholders and um, you'll see the policy is more general than it was in previous versions. Uh, the idea is we were thinking the policy should cover kind of the basics and then the faculty handbook, which gets updated annually, can handle whatever, you know, specific details come up year by year. Um, the student smoking and substance abuse policies, the change there is wherever we see um, tobacco, we also see nicotine. So we're adding that language in, um, and that was a suggestion from one of the district student assistant counselors, um, because there's an uptick in students who are using harmful nicotine products that do not have tobacco in them. Um, and so we want to make sure our policies you know, are uh, uh, appropriate. Um, let's see. 
Um, two policies are being abolished pertaining to COVID-19. Farewell. Please don't return. <laughs> um, and then there are a few board officer policy, the college adjournment and cancellation, notice of board meetings. Um, those policies pertain to how we all operate. Um, there were some optional language, some choices we can make in there, and um, we agreed, as you'll see, to just have things continue the way we do. So we do verbal <coughs> voting, for example. Um, we post our public meetings, and you know, like nothing really changed, but just kind of fine-tuning updates. Um, we there's a bilingual and ESL education um, policy and regula regulation. Right now, we have eight um, English language learners in the district. There were none two and a half years ago. So this is um, something that has changed in our school community. Um, this policy talks about best practices, right, and how we'll address that if our number gets to 10 um, or if it goes even higher to 20. There are different kind of mandatory programs and uh, policies that this would you know, like to instigate. Are those learners spread evenly throughout the district or are there groups of families in certain schools? We know they're clustered mostly in Mill and High. Yes, so, and one of the elementary schools. Okay. And a few years ago, we had a, um, a, a, a several at Tatum, uh, a visiting professor from China had her okay. children there. So it's, you get that type of clustering sometimes. Um, and right now we are, oh, one other thing to note is we're part of a South Jersey consortium for English language learners. And so we reach out to this network um, and share kind of services, supports, ideas. So even though we had zero two and a half years ago, we have uh, professionals and educators who are knowledgeable to, to provide those supports. Um, there's uh, a policy and regulation about um, if there's a need to switch to virtual or remote instruction. Basically, that policy is saying snow days will still be snow days. <laughs> That's what I was so, looking right. for. Like three days at least. Okay. So um, children can rejoice together. Uh, in fact, I love it too because I think snow days are magical. But um, it lets us know, like, say the furnace breaks and it's going to take a week for the part to come in. We won't lose those days and have to make them up. We can switch to virtual. It's that for those kinds of situations. We hope don't happen, um, but if we need to. Um, the attendance, oops, just click the wrong button, which made me go on the wrong spot. Hang on. There's an attendance policy update. What's the other? Enrollment. Oh, what's it going? Yeah. Yeah, and student enrollment policy, those are mandatory policies. Again, small changes. Um, enrollment is the count of how many students we have a few months into the school year. This is kind of what our number is. And then attendance is more daily attendance. How do we keep track and um, how is that reported? We've decided to um, sit with um, a harassment, intimidation, and bullying bullying policy for another meeting. We have updated that policy multiple times since I've been on the board, which is just a year. <laughs> and so we want to kind of make sure we're understanding these nuanced changes. And this is a new, this is another update. Right, that policy. right. It's the third one, I think, in this year that I've been. Correct. And right. important to know, all of these changes are instigated by legislative changes that happen. It's not us tinkering with, well, let's, let's go rewrite this or, or that. These are all mandated in uh, administrative code that requires us to adapt our policies. Yeah, so it's not a choice. Yeah, so. Right, and we're up to date, so. Like they're reporting to the police thing. Right, right. and so now, yeah, and so this is built on that, and probably in response to maybe some of the, the maybe some of the comments. Maybe we didn't report. Oh, okay. Right. 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 Got some juicy comments. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Um, so the plan is to sit with that, give it a, another close read, and then um, we'll report uh, to you all next month about it. Um, the other two policies are mandatory student records and bomb threats, lockdown procedures, um, you know, the emergency response kinds of things. And again, no major changes for us, just making sure we're current, you know, like fine-tuning fine a couple of things, as you can see in the summary. Great. 
There was a any lot other of any questions for Rachel? I, I did have a question, but I don't know if you want to talk about it now or when we get into it. It, it won't affect my voting. Um, I'm just curious. We have all these 8420 regulations, but we don't have the 8420 policy in this read. Did I did I overlook it? Or and, and not that it matters, but I just you know part of it didn't. One of them had a lot of edits, and it refers back to the policy. And I just I didn't know what. I didn't know if you I could give me just a general thing of I like. I think you what know we these are about. mandatory updates. At updates that we need to, these are regulations we have to vote on. Correct. These, and so, these are required updates that we have to make. Uh, and what you have to do is you have to take out any specific information regarding your response to those. So the actual emergency plan policy has not changed at all. However, how we implement that policy through things like the bomb threat and lockdown procedures, active shooter, um, that is now a more general statement and all of the updated specific information is in our confidential uh, security. So manner. the idea is though those were too detailed and yeah. so we were potentially giving too much information, too much information to the public, Got like it. to everybody. To yeah. someone who might like want to be harm the yeah. school. As I'm with to, you, we just yeah. didn't ever publish the regulations anyway, but not to the public. Well, yeah, so regulates, there are it's many okay. regulations do not require Board of Education approval that we just put on for review, but for these particular regulations that are on this month, these were, are required to have board approval. Any good questions? Very good. Yeah. Okay, um, and the PTA updates? No. Nope. All right, um, Dr. Creole, do you have an assistant superintendent report? Nope, nothing tonight. Okay. Um, Mr. Klaus, I, I apparently. I have a few things. Um, for, first, just you know what's happening in our world, our, our administrative world. We have moved, so if you're looking for us, we are now on 95 Grove Street, no longer over on Lincoln Avenue. So if you want to swing by and say hello, you go to Lincoln Avenue, there will be a locked door. Um, I'm sure about sadness, but if you want to see us, you come over 95 Grove. Um, please stop in. Well, anytime you want to swing by and stop, just say hello. Just check out the new, the new, new facility. It's very nice. Um, as we were moving, we were Mike. Mike is moving. Moved his house. Moved an office building, and he's in the middle of budget season. So he's the busiest man I know right now. Um, so when we have our our finance meeting next week, we'll start talking about the budget, and you guys will be hearing multiple meetings and budgets about stuff because that's the next eight weeks of our. 10, 10 or 12 weeks of our world is is budget um that's coming along um the law enforcement moa which was alluded to earlier so i was discussing this with the prosecutor a county prosecutor um and i don't want i can't i wish i had the quote but it was along the lines of we think you're the first people who notice this type of thing like <laughs> this has been one of those things um he agrees that there is contradictory language not only with between the new code and this, but actually even within the MOA. Um, so he's going to the Department of Justice. So now we're working with the Department of Justice through the prosecutor. Um, they are, we are supposed to have like a massive state sign off for all MOAs on February 7th. So he seemed a little panicked that, so he seemed a little panicked that you know, he said, I said, well, my board's not going to agree to this because it's contradictory. And, and I, you know, I said, we're following, we changed our policies to fit code, but my MOA says something different. Um, and he agrees that we, we, this has to be figured out on a, on a higher level. Um, so that's happening now. So that's that, that was that tease on that one. It was, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I think, I think she, she knows that she knows that we're the only ones who've ever read it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. When you, start, you know, so when you start <laughs> passing laws that say we're going to report kindergartners right. to the police department, well, I, think I think I would read that. Word. The MLA is the one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've done that, I'm reading every single one. Yeah. Can I just interrupt one second? Just so the public understands, we have policies that are responsive to state laws. Then MOA is our agreement with, with the, the police, with the police law enforcement, police, how, law enforcement how we work field. together, what we do. And right. now those things are not aligned, and we right. think there are problems within them. We are up and up legal, but we, think about it seem. We believe, so we've said, right. passed a resolution right. to the Department of Ed saying we philosophically disagree with the most the recent code 
requiring all bias action reports, regardless of circumstance, severity, or nature. The law enforcement, the state unit, you know, unified state law enforcement, all schools have the same law enforcement MOA, says it's up to the discretion of the superintendent based on the severity and nature of the act. So if it is a third grader saying something to a third grader, I can say, okay, age appropriateness, then we can, we can solve this here. 17 year old, that's a different animal, right? So the new code does not allow for me to say the eight year old needs to be looked at differently than 17 year old. Right. And, and the new code means you have to immediately report and call all investigations. So it's an accusation that's being investigated by police, right? So, not, so what happens is, I mean, yeah. what happens is I notify the police and the prosecutor, we start our investigation. Yeah. And then if the prosecutor wants to look into it, he holds us and okay. comes back. Sometimes he just says, we don't care. Right. Move on with life. Right. I think that, and that's kind of what they do with the younger kids. Yeah. But still, even the, even the practice yeah. of saying it yeah. makes me a little. Yes, agreed. Well, and I think yeah. it's like it the fact that they then have a state law saying you have to do this, but yet the MOA was saying yeah. you have yeah. discretion. Yeah. Like, the MOA has no, I don't have any discretion, and I'm quite upset about that. So right. let's. The MOA has not been updated since 2017. So, there well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's time. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm glad we're making, starting the podcast, it should be yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we received from the county eight Malox boxes, that's um, Narcon, oh, okay. that for emergency Narcon, for, well, so we have been installing all of our buildings by our AEDs. <clears throat> um, that does not mean we're having, uh, we're having an outbreak of drugs and, and, and that in the things, but it's like life saving equipment, like an AED. So, so that we just got those after break. We'll be installing those in the next week or two. I'll be putting out a notice to the community about what they are, why they're there. Um, very grateful the county supplying those because they, you know, right now, I, I probably checked there. I think we have our, our Narcon like shoved in the AED cabinet. This is a separate cabinet with a separate signage so people know where to look. Um, Monday, we have our students, many of our students involved in MLK Day of Service. Um, which is exciting. I'm sure next week we got a new board rep sworn in. We'll hear about that. Um, I have in here next week to say goodbye to our, our old student board reps, which would be sad. We get to welcome three new board reps coming in. Um, and I said, I already talked about we have our priority. We have next week we'll be talking also about our needs our priority for the bond referendum. Oh, one other thing. So a um, question came up in December about cost for extracurricular activities. Um, so Mike did me the favor and he broke this down. So for all extracurricular activities, this runs from student voice groups in the elementary school to the football coaches, to the chess team, to drama and all those things. For all salaries for all of those positions, um, athletic and non-athletic is about $860,000. That's the salary for all extracurricular activities. Um, it's important to note that in our high school, we have about an 88% percent, percent, um, participation rate in extracurriculars. That is uh, freakish. Um, most school districts are more like 50 to 60%. If you're lucky, many are below 50%. So that's a really good investment on that number of, of, of students. And for all supplies and materials, it's about $233,000 for a total of roughly $1.9 million we spend in extracurriculars in our budget year. Um, also interesting, um, things like uh, our musical. Um, we don't pay for the, the rights to the shows. They generate that money out of their ticket sales. I think it should be different. I think we should pay for that, but we can talk about that when I talk to Mike about that. Um, that can be seven to $10,000 depending on the show you pay. So um, that luckily, Mr. Dean has done a great job. They're selling out, so they have money. Um, but if you don't have, if you have a couple, rough couple of years, it, it really limits what options you have as far as shows. Football, I think we lost, we've taken all the ticket sales for football. If you pay out what it runs a football game, um, the football team, the football games generated a negative $500 that we came up with. So the football is program over the course of the season on games, just to run the games, not practices or uniform equipment, uh, lost $500. Um, everyone else loses a lot more. Um, because it costs well, football games cost more because of this. So, like for a typical football game, to give you an example, um, police are about nine hundred dollars. That was it, nine hundred dollars a game. Um, referees are about eight eight fifty. Everyone else helping, ambulance three hundred fifty dollars. So it, it costs a lot to run a game. Um, 
we're fortunate. We have a pretty good football program. This we get a lot of ticket sales. We had a Thanksgiving game this year, which was if you were there, was packed. Next year we don't have a Thanksgiving game. We won't make near as much revenue in football because that's a big pack game. So so that's a, that's kind of a rundown on the extracurriculars. Yeah. I'm backing way up to the very beginning. You might have already done this, and maybe I missed it, or you're planning on it. But will you send something out to the public to let them know where your new offices are? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Letter? We did not do that. That's a good yeah. idea. Thank you. And you know what? I'd like to, to make a comment about what you just said, Chuck, because I think that um, there, you know, there might be different perspectives based on um, where your children are, if you have children in the district, and where they are in the district, and. Um, if you aren't in the thick of it, you you might hear that number and it might sound like a big number. But first of all, these extracurriculars, they help build character. You know, we've heard people talk about reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, yes, we, we education is incredibly important, but the extracurriculars are the things that, that build the character to, to for, for our children to go on and those are the things that colleges look at as well. Yes, they want to see good grades, but they want to see the, 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 the roundness of the, these kids and their their participation in all of these great extracurriculars that the school offers. So um, that, that number, it, it's, it's not a just a number, number, but it's also it's, not a large percentage of our budget. And I think, as you're saying, for the character and the community building benefits, I think it's a really wise investment yeah. in our budget, particularly because you have 88% of your kids doing extra school activities yes. in high school. That's 88% of your kids that are not bored and yeah. meandering yeah. around yeah. in the yeah. afternoon. Yeah. And an excellent example is back when in 2000, 2009 or 10, when, when Christie really cut the budgets hard, Almost every school dropped freshman sports. We kept them um, because once you learn to hang out in the corner, you learn to hang out in the corner. It's hard to get people back. So even though we, we went to 80% season for freshman sports, we were one of the few school districts that actually kept freshman sports. Um, and still to this day, the Colonial Conference, several schools have not gotten them back because they went away and they didn't work them back into the budget. So that goes to that point, too, that keeping students active and engaged. Um, when I was a high school principal and you're interviewing tuition students, you'd ask what, what activities they want to do. And I would point out, I said, there's 800 kids here, 740 of them are doing something every day after school. Yeah. That you, that's what we do here. So, and, and that was, a, it was always something that I think thrilled the parents to hear. Yeah. And the kids were happy about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that stuff is good yeah. for people, for those who aren't in the school, don't have kids. Like that is a benefit to the community yeah. as a whole. Yeah. And also um, so great for the student body. So from personal experience, I have a sophomore and she knows upperclassmen. She's helping onboard yeah, incoming absolutely. students. It makes this whole kind of, we take care of each other. Um, like when she scored her first goal this season, she was getting texts from folks who graduated who oh. had helped her her freshman year. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, it's really sweet. This is incredible support yes. that our students are getting. It's really powerful. Yeah. Money well spent. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And, um, anything else? I don't have much for the board president report. We were planning to do the self-evaluation discussion during the board discussion, but we did not realize the, I guess the NJSBA rep is who compiles that self-evaluation and they only do it bi-monthly. So anyone, so mm -hmm. some people weren't able to do theirs until January, which means we won't get the report until February. So we're just going to table that and we'll have that discussion at the work session in February. Um, I was I'm sorry. Your face is going to I know. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's a busy drowning. time. <laughs> and so we'll just, we'll just table that and we're going to do that in February. And that way we have every, we want to make sure everyone gets all the ideas get heard. So, okay, we will move on to open public comment. Members of the community are invited to speak for up to three minutes at this time. If you'd like to make, sure, make an additional comment, you must wait until each person has had a chance to make their initial statement. All comments must be directed towards the board, not members of the public. According to our bylaws, comment session can last no longer than one hour. This is an opportunity for the board to listen but not debate issues or enter a question and answer period. 
Please be aware that not all issues brought up before a board meeting will be resolved that evening. We ask you to, to identify yourself by stating your name and the name of your street. You may make your comment to the board. While public education can be an emotional issue, we strive to maintain a certain level of decorum at the meeting. Public meetings are recorded and televised and students often participate in the meetings. As such, citizens are expected to maintain a tone of courtesy and civility. So you may um, approach the pivot. If anyone has any public comment? Okay, seeing no public comment, um, we will move on to our items for discussion. We're not approving anything tonight. We will be doing that at the voting session. So, um, Mike, what I do is on the work sessions, I'll say governance. And you will have, did you get this agenda beforehand? No. Okay, so now that you're a member, you'll get the agenda. Okay. And you'll you'll have um, links that you can go through to, to read everything. And then in the work session, I'll, I'll say governance. And then you'll go through and people will ask questions that they have if, or, and we can discuss it a little bit. But I won't read every item. When we do the voting session, which happens next week, I'll read all the items. But we'll still have an opportunity to discuss them before we vote. And... Um, yeah, and then they're broken up, you'll see. So. Yep. And it's a lot. New members, it takes, I mean, we have quite a few members who just came in in the past year. It takes a while. So um, it don't feel as though, like, we have your back, you know? Like, so if you if you have a question, please ask it. Um, and don't feel as though you have to know everything right away because there's a pretty good mar steep margin learning for learning. steep learning curve. That's what I was trying to say. Thank you. Um, now, that, now that you're on, I'll reach out to you more and try to find a time for you to come in. Oh, cool. Toward, you know, meet, meet okay. the principals, see so you I'll understand our structure. Way. At that time, we can get them for next week. Any questions on this specifics? I can okay. Do that, so. cool. Yeah, that'll be super helpful. Chuck will show you the ropes and probably introduce you to some key players, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so we have the um, governance. You want to look over that? Have any questions on governance? I had seen a couple of typos, I think, in some of the policies. I'm assuming we're going to catch those um, things where, like, for the safety <laughs> plan. cringing behind you. Sorry, <laughs> Gino. Like, the safety plan where there's, like, a line that was stray. Um, yeah, we were, That's, like, supposed to be deleted but was missed. It's obvious when you look at it again. We'll clean that up. But yeah. <laughs> it was a lot to do. Mm -hmm. It was a no. <laughs> There were a lot of policies. A lot of policies. <laughs> and, and that's how we get them through Charles Esme. They list. Sometimes yeah. you get a, a lot at once. Um, any other questions? I know we talked about it a lot at, at uh, while Rachel was doing report. Do you have questions? No. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, it feels weird we haven't had a work session in a while. So <laughs> we're just skipping along. October. Oh, yeah. my goodness. All right, so curriculum and special education. There was a typo in G. It should it says Wash Legacy and it should be Wash. Just <laughs> sorry, I started it. <laughs> <laughs> I had that one. I had no idea that one. <laughs> So in the ultimate um, typo, my name is spelled wrong, my driver's license. Oh, jeez. This is 1981. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then that's fine. I'm not going to get the passport. I use my passport to fly in. Well. <laughs> um, um, I, just to comment, when look, I was looking at the field trips, um, they all seemed really great. And I'm excited for our students when we were looking at the elementary school trips. Um, they all seem great, the ones that are coming up. Just good stuff. Yeah, they really do. I was actually looking at that too. One comment I had on that, and I don't know if it's left off because we're intentionally, but um, if we should put the grade level for them or no, does that lock us into, it has to be all third grade. Some of them say like fifth grade trip to wherever, Yeah, no. but a lot of them don't say the grade level. And so I didn't know if if I that was- I they also the grade level. Maybe I, what's that? 
I, I, I know what the spans the co- it, It's grades. the first That's column. probably what okay. they didn't put, but they could put the span. They could put three to five. 12 yeah. or no, 12, yeah, three yeah. to five. Or. It's, it's by grade level. I think it was probably just maybe the way it was. Oh. See, I have it on an Excel spreadsheet. So oh, perhaps okay. when it was transferred, the link to the agenda, maybe that was because it's column A. So the grade level. Oh, oh I see, see the top of this is HMHS. See. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I see that. I see. No yeah, now I see. I think I looked at, it looks a little different than the version I originally looked at, Probably. so I might have looked at an earlier version. Okay, so we're good. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, other? I think I asked this one before, but just to reiterate, for all of our field trips, if we have students whose economic circumstances no. preclude their parents, we have a fund, we can take care of those students, they get to go on the trip. Correct. Right. Either right. including the senior trip, which is so $1,000. Yep. Great. <clears throat> right. Okay, um, personnel. I was sad to see our resignations. Yes. Ms. McKelvey and, and um, Mr. Walker. My nephew loves Mr. Walker. He yelled at me. <laughs> yeah, Tommy has Mr. Lover and is not. They were they wanted to sabotage his new job. So I said that probably wasn't a wise move. Yeah. But, and they wanted to come to this meeting to do it. I'm like, he's leaving us. This isn't where you go to sabotage. Um okay. <laughs> so I was sad to see him. Okay, any um, questions? No more questions on personnel? Okay, how about um, business and finance recommendations? Mike, will we will we have bids? Do we have bids? You, 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 you stole my... <laughs> 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 We've got the toilet room for Central. What about the rest? <laughs> There's the, uh, tomorrow morning, we'll have okay. bids for these. I put them there as placeholders. I listen. Next week, we'll have had a finance committee and we'll receive bids. We'll receive bids tomorrow morning. So okay. we'll talk about the, the bidders uh, tomorrow um, evening. Is it looking good? Just it. so you know, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I've had actually a couple of requests for all the planners for some of these. Uh, I mean, I think the um, I think the toilet room renovations had twenty people or twenty contractors oh, wow. interested in specifications for. Great! Wow! Wow! Yeah. No, that's not the number of bidders we received, but it's. Do you think that has to do with the timing that we did it? Yeah, it's zero. Yeah, it's better than zero on last time. For those, and for Mike, you might not realize this, we actually wanted to do this last year and got zero bids uh, on renovating the bathrooms. But, but again, that's so plain holders are people who inquire about the specifications of the work to be done. We might get six. There could still be like six yeah. or seven. But hopefully with 20 expressing interest, we at least have something. something. Yeah. A, yeah. A, yeah. A, <laughs> someone to fix these bad If not, we're all volunteering. Yeah. 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 Putting on our hard yeah. hats. Yeah. Serving leadership right there. <laughs> okay, any more person, our business finance questions? And any questions on the minutes? Well, they're not attached to it. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't that. So, after the We'll wait for next week for <laughs> questions on minutes. All right, um, items for future consideration by the board. I was um, curious to learn more about the post that came through about athletics and behavior of people watching, or I don't know the right language, but spectators and student yes. behavior. Right. Yes, I think, yes, I share your desire for. And I don't know if the Student Life Committee will be talking about that. You know, I I don't know what the agenda will be for that, but a couple of things I'm curious about is, are we still doing the training that we did in the fall and how is that going? Um, What kinds of issues are we seeing? So I, you know, I don't want to violate confidentiality, but just like what kind of, I don't know, culture, maybe potential blips are happening um because i felt like the messaging missed a bit in that it was like if there were little kids present you wouldn't talk that way i'm like no you're a haddonfield student you don't talk that way right like we don't do that in our community 
But instead it was like, you know, if your grandma was there, what would you do? It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, we're over there. You're there. You're you don't do that. Yourself. Stop doing that. You know, like something. And I'm also curious about what students know about harassment, imitation, imitation, <laughs> intimidation, and bullying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, does it go that far? What are we, you, you get, like, right. that kind yeah. of, like, cloud. Yeah. <laughs> that bubble of culture things, issues. So. Yeah. Yeah. Culture yeah. issues with athletics, because we've talked about it before. Right. Yeah. And it seems like we saw some tweaks. So yeah. nice. And without going into, like, obviously we're having our first SLC conversation next week. Yeah. Um, I certainly would imagine that those types of, uh, those types of topics and issues right. are within scope and something that, that we can dig in deeper on before we have a, uh, you know, maybe a working session. Right. But, and when you dig in deeper on that, like, I know that there was a reference to just online posts and while absolutely individuals that perpetrate or are the ringleaders of such things need to be dealt with, it's super disheartening if there's a whole bunch of hearts and likes to a post because every single student that does that is complicit. And we need to ensure that from a culture perspective, they understand that and they don't do those things because, you know, if, if someone reads horrible posts like that, they're going to think that Rightfully, we'll perhaps it. it's a larger community thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's like the whole thing can be really disheartening. And after all of the training so far that it's not just a few bad apples that do the posting, but everybody who hearts it, it's, it's a larger problem. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that, and I, I, I think that we're, you know, I agree, I agree with, with everyone's sentiments and and really helping students understand their impact. Right. Because yeah. I think it's they often don't understand yeah. their impact. Yeah. I think in a time that we're beginning to say, hey, hold the phone. We have um, you know, we have things that we want to, even within an incredible community like this, there are things that we want to look at, things that we want to improve upon um, to make this school environment the most hospitable and welcoming and awesome for every single kid, right? And that's, you know, kind of the, the intent and how we're thinking about it. So yeah, totally and, and understanding the, the wider community. That was always something that we've discussed that, that is a challenge in, in small communities is understanding not only every single kid here, but the impact that that ripple that you I'm have. I'm thinking yeah, of like, when you go to college, you talk about that the local community system, system, understanding like, about that. What you do in your letters reflects on your whole group. What you do in an athletics sweatshirt reflects on that whole team. When you are a hot field student and you are out in the world and you're behaving inappropriately, that is reflecting on this entire community. And it does seem like that message still isn't sinking in <clears throat> because I can't imagine that the vast majority of the community when we see our wonderful teachers that were being honored and vast majority of our kids are great kids yeah. and some yeah. are making some bad choices and, and I think like that's part it. of the, the <laughs> helping when we look at the student life and the culture and really kind of um, getting back to what the root of who we are and helping students understand their impact. Mm -hmm. because that they, they do have an impact, which is an awesome thing, but knowing that's a responsibility too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, any other questions, comments? All right, um, then we will close the public meeting. A motion to close the public meeting and go motion. into executive session to discuss um, um, land yeah, acquisition. We have stepped <coughs> Okay. Yes. Public meeting is adjourned.